go. Porridge with a spot of honey, just the way you like it. Hmm? Are you sure? So by the bell. It's faith. No, just brought it down. She hadn't touched a mouthful. Oh, she used to love her food, you know. Eating, cooking. Her bread and butter pudding's the eighth wonder of the world. Carrots, apples, peas, garlic, herbs, and seeds like cayenne, pepper, fenugreek, and caraway. Doesn't sound very nice. Not altogether. Anyway, they're supposed to improve cholesterol, so you want plenty of exercise, a low-fat diet, and lots of things like these. Do I? Hmm. <gasps> Is that a full fat? Oh, come on, Julia, please. Oh, come on, wouldn't you rather drink something that's good for you? Hmm. Oh, it smells like this water. Well, it tastes nice and clean and healthy. Mind you, of course, you wouldn't be able to taste it because your mouth is all coated in dairy fat. Which is just as well, if the smell's anything to go by. Oh, I thought I'd call in on George, Ronnie and the baby. Later, see how they're getting on. That's nice. Well... Most things make her feel sick these days. I, I can just about get her to eat enough as long as I put everything in the blender, but... She does uh, find it hard to keep the pills down. Is there some other way? It might be time to move to a syringe driver. It's like a continuous injection, a bit like an IV. It's battery operated, safe and easy, and effective. Oh, right, good. I'll need to get Dr. Croft to prescribe the medication. I'm sure it won't be a problem. I can probably get it back to you this afternoon if that suits you. Oh, thank you, yeah. Sally, darling. Dad. Hi, Faith. You haven't met Dean, have you? Fiance. <laughs> Luckiest man in the world. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, and congratulations, I didn't know. Thank you. How's Mum? She's asleep. Uh, are you going to go up? Of course. You're looking tired, love. I am tired. Yeah, we're all a bit tired, though. So. so, Dean, how's work? Oh, rushed off her feet. Uh, well, at least I am. I'm going to be all right if the rest of the staff pulled their weight. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Listen, I should go. Well, let me see you out. Okay. Bye. So, how are you, Sally? Coping. Dean seems nice. Have you set a date yet? And we brought it forward so that Mum would be able to make it, but then she got worse, so now we put it back again. It must be hard for you. But don't forget, you're not alone. I know from my own experience how important the support of friends and family is. You've got Dean, your dad. Oh, don't worry about Dad, he'll be all right. Sally, are you worried that this might be hereditary? Mum had breast cancer before I was born. Now she's got ovarian cancer. The same defective gene can cause both. I think it's pretty likely to be hereditary, don't you? Not necessarily. In fact, in the vast majority of cancers, heredity isn't a factor. <laughs> in fact, we don't really know what causes them. But if you are concerned, maybe you should talk to Dr. Croft. I talked to Dr. Thompson. And I've already had the gene test out. I'll get the results today. Listen, um, do you want to talk about it? I, we could go back inside. I do want to talk about it, but not here. Can we do it at the surgery? Later, just you and me. Yeah, of course we can. Great. Thanks. I should go and see Mum. I'll see myself out. No, it doesn't sound very romantic. Back of a motorbike. Dean keeps saying it'll be fantastic. Once in a lifetime. Grand Canyon. Las Vegas. Let's hope it doesn't turn out too expensive. You and Dad went to Paris, didn't you? That's more what I'd like. Somewhere romantic and close by. And go back again and again. Dean. 
Dean had to go. He's been under a bit of pressure at work. And you? How about you? I wish everyone would stop asking. Well, it's just you seem anxious, you know. I mean, this isn't about Dean, is it? You're not having second thoughts. My mum is dying. That's why I'm anxious. <sighs> Look, I know it's hard, but you must try not to be angry. Why not? Someone's got to be. Someone's got to fight. Waiting's always the worst part. But you mustn't just assume that the test will find the gene mutation. That'd be like giving in. I'm not giving in, I'm being realistic. My cousin, my first cousin on my mum's side, had the test a couple of months ago and she's got it. A mutation on the BRCA1 gene. Well, that still doesn't mean... My granny and my aunt died of breast cancer. My granny was 29 years old. My mum survived breast cancer when she was about my age and now she's dying of ovarian cancer. I know what the tests will show. Sally, before you took the test, did you speak to the counsellors? They were very helpful, very kind. And did they discuss what your options would be if it does turn out you have the gene? I knew what I was going to do before I spoke to them. I'm going to have my breasts and my ovaries removed. I'm going to have the preventative surgery that would have saved my mother. Mac. Bad time? No, not so. It's good to see you. Just wanted to see how you're getting on. Offer a veteran's advice. <laughs> well, we're fine. Actually, no, we're better than fine. We are, we're excellent. Good. So, where are you hiding them? Yeah. Thanks. Did you discuss any alternatives? The only alternative seemed to be regular screening. In other words, wait until it's too late. Not at all. Not if you catch it early enough. Faith, my whole adult life, I've been aware of what might happen to me. I can be out with my friends, having a laugh, or, or with Dean. And I suddenly remember it and I, I feel afraid. It's like a punishment. Every time I manage to forget about it, it comes back to remind me. But the moment I made this decision, I felt like at long last I was in control. It, it can't get me anymore. What do your family and friends think? They don't even know I've had the test. Well, your mum at least would understand. She's too ill. I don't want to upset her with this in any way. I don't want to spend the last week feeling guilty for handing it on to me. And what about your dad? Your dad's got enough on his plate. And Dean? Dean's different. I just... I didn't know how he'd deal with it. Is this about having children? Because an oophorectomy isn't the same as a hysterectomy. Did the counsellors discuss trying IVF? Yeah, but it's not that. It's just... It's a big thing for him. It seems to me that he'd want the best for you. The luckiest man in the world. It's exactly because it is such a big thing that you need to discuss it with him. How? He'll find a way. Then he could go with you to get the results. Well, I don't know. He, he's very busy at work. I'll well, give him the chance at least. I suppose so. So how are you coping? Mess, tiredness, continual screaming, washing machine on day and night. It's just looking after Ronnie. <laughs> Pretty little thing, though, aren't you? Hmm? Takes after a mother. Definitely got your eyes, Ronnie. Nonsense. Those are come hither eyes. Definitely George's. George? Yours or Ronnie's? What did your mum think? Grannies can usually tell. Bit of both, I suppose. I can't see either of us. Ooh, whoopsie. I don't want any excuses, Paul. Just get it done before I get back, yeah? OK. Everyone only did what they were supposed to do, eh? Anyway, doll, what's the urgent? I've got a heavy day on at work. Hey, what's that? Is it your mum? It's mum and me. Dean, you know the gene test for breast and ovarian cancer? I've had it. I'm still waiting for the results, but I've, I've had the test. Without telling me? I'm telling you now. I'm sorry. But we, we talked about this ages ago. I mean, how's the test going to help? Well, no, once and for all will help me. But there's nothing you can actually do. There is. I mentioned it at the time. 
But you weren't listening. No, no, you wouldn't. Dean, it would save my life. No, 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 even if you got the gene, it doesn't mean you're going to get cancer. Not definitely, but... Have you talked to anyone about this? My doctor, the counsellors at the genetics clinic, Faith. And they all thought you should have the surgery, just on the off chance. It's not on the off chance, Dean. The risk is too high. No, not for me, it's not. No, have you really thought about this? Let's find someone else you can talk to, get a second opinion. I've already made up my mind. When? My whole life. But you didn't tell me. I mean, I didn't have a right to know before I... I mean, before we... Before we what? Before we married. Dean! No, sorry, I need to, I need to think about it. Dean! You off for lunch? Not yet. And I'm starving. I've uh, got half a tuna sandwich in the fridge if you want to have that. Oh, lovely. Don't let Julia see you. She's become a food fascist. I said I was having tuna and she was going on about the white bread and the mayonnaise. Here's that low-fat diet she's on. Yes, well, the only diet that works for me is a seafood diet. <laughs> seafood? Seafood and eat it. Can I have a word, please? She only just told me. It must be a shock. Could say that, yeah. Dean, you do realise that I can't discuss Sally with you. But I can tell you that she only told me about it today. So who can I talk to about it? Her GP, there's got to be something someone can do. Sally's already made her own decision. And a very difficult one, I should imagine. It's really Sally you need to speak to. And she needs your support. Support for that? There's nothing even wrong with her. Dean, when women are found to have the mutation in this gene, they do have a very high chance of developing breast cancer and a higher chance than normal of developing ovarian cancer. Yeah, but there's a chance she won't get either, so she's going to have major surgery on the toss of a coin. Look, I can't tell you that there's no risk at all in having this surgery, but I can tell you that she'd be in excellent hands at St Phil's. That's not the op. It's how it's going to leave her. She, she won't be the same once they butchered her. Is this about having children? Because it still might be possible for her to conceive using IVF. It's not about that. Well, then what? She's beautiful. You've seen her. She won't be the same when they finished with her, carved her up. No matter how excellent they are, she'd, she'd be all scarred and ruined. Ronnie, you'll affect her development with that ridiculous burbling. How's she sleeping? Oh, it's not the sleeping that's the problem, it's the constant waking up. It's like living with a malevolent alarm clock. Oh, she doesn't mean that. Is she feeding well? Yes, Doctor. And you two? Are you sleeping and feeding well? Mac, I'm a doctor too, remember? I know I'm looking a bit tired and I'm being a bit irritable, but guess what? Looking tired and being irritable are classic symptoms of being kept awake. It's no big deal. There's more to this whole thing than Sally's figure. Just about how she looks. How you look changes how you are. Wouldn't you rather she was healthy? I'd rather she stayed in one piece. Look, have you spoken to Sally about reconstructive surgery? I don't know what she intends to do, but it is an option. And it's usually performed the same time as the mistake. What's wrong with you people? Do you not understand? I want her how she is. I want you to talk her out of it. It's Sally's decision. It's her life and her choice, and you should respect that. If you and her GP have talked her into this, I will sue you. Get it? Familial hypercholesterolemia. Genetic lipid disorder. Julia, it is not that. You did tell Faith, did you? Yes, of course I did. Good. How do you know it's not that? Ha! Ah, the cavalry. Come in. Thanks for coming in, Faith. What's going on? Um, I went to see George and Ronnie earlier. Have you noticed anything odd with them? 
Well, I haven't seen them for a few days, but no, I haven't. What do you mean by that? I thought you said the baby was fine. Oh, no, the baby is fine. It's George. I get the impression that something isn't quite clicking. With George and the baby? Well, and with George and Ronnie. When I asked them about it, they were really evasive. I just thought maybe you could drop by. Today? I'm busy. Well, I could go. Well, I was hoping that Faith could cast a professional eye over things, you know. Three children, Mac. I'm not an amateur. No, no, that's not what I meant. It doesn't have to be today. I'll give them a call later, see when would suit. Great. Thanks, Faith. You grabbing lunch? I'll join you. Okay. Cheers. Thanks a lot. So busy day. Run up my feet. Ah, oh, well, I've got just the thing for you. <sighs> Wheatgrass and spirulina smoothie. I've made extra. Spirulina? Yeah, it's an algae. You know, it boosts the immune system, gives you energy. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> it's full of beta carotene. And iron, and B12, and, well, all the minerals and vitamins and nutrients that you could possibly need. I'm fine. <laughs> You're not going to eat that. Yeah, I'm starving. No, 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 no. That, that's full of mayonnaise and, and over-processed white flour. You, look, as health workers, we've got to set a good example. Uh, Julia, don't you think you're getting a bit carried away with this diet? I'm not saying that healthy eating's not good, but then it's a little bit of what you fancy. I'm not getting carried away. Sally Winters. Sally only told me about it today. We still haven't talked about it yet, not properly. <sighs> and went down to the health centre to try and get some information out of that nurse, but... Why didn't she talk to me? Oh, exactly. Well, that's probably Faith now. <sighs> Hi, Stan. I've got the syringe driver and the dimorphine prescription from Dr Croft. Are you OK? Dean's here. Oh. Um, he's told me about Sally. I see. Uh, do you want me to come No, back? please. I, I'd really like to know some more. Can I go through? She's gone through all this on her own. I had to think how desperate she must have been. Exactly. Desperate. She doesn't know what she's doing. We, we have to decide how we can stop her. Stop uh, her? Persuade her. Get her to see sense. We, we have to make sure she does the right thing. What? Well, how do we know this isn't the right thing? What's it got to do with us? I don't believe it. Not you as well. Don't you think she's entitled to make her own mind up? She doesn't know what she's thinking. That's the point. Please, Dean. We don't want to wake Ruth. She is in no position to make up her own mind. Her mother is dying upstairs. Of course she's going to panic. I'm sorry, Mr Winters, but it's true. There is nothing wrong with her. Our job is to make her see sense. Our job, as you put it, is to support her and to at least wait until she gets the results. What is wrong with everybody? Do you really want to see your own daughter disfigured? Of course I don't! But I want to see her stay healthy. I want to see her live. Busy? <sighs> Trying to be. I can't stop thinking about George and Ronnie. Oh, yeah, me too. You know, I only asked Faith to go because... Um, oh. Listen, I know that. Don't worry. Mm. Do you think it's postnatal depression? No. I suppose she could just have been tired, or maybe I got on a bad day. Mm. We should not jump to conclusions. No. Let's wait and see what Faith thinks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wouldn't be the first time I got the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> you should see Ronnie with the baby, though. <laughs> Besotted. No. <laughs> It's ironic, though, isn't it, really? What is? Well, it was always George that wanted the baby the most, and it was Ronnie that wasn't ever sure. Perhaps you should both talk this through with Sally. Fine. But let's first you and me decide what we're going to say. About what? Oh. Going to say about what? Your father and I were just discussing your plans. You told Dad. I had to. Why didn't you tell me? 
It was private. This is us you're talking about. We're, we're family, practically. It's this lot you shouldn't have talked to. Everyone I spoke to at the genetics clinic and at the mill were professional and supportive. More than I can say for either of you. You didn't give me a chance. Ruth's awake. Look, perhaps I should set up a syringe driver. So? Look, I don't want to argue with you. And I do want to be supportive, but... I can't tell you you're doing the right thing when you're not. Tell me, which part of the surgery upsets you the most? The breasts? The ovaries? Both! Look, you can't just move the goalposts. Ima imagine if it was the other way around, if it was me having the same sort of surgery, everything removed. This isn't a game, Dean. There is no goal. And how would I feel if it was the other way around? I'd be upset. I'd be confused. But I'd also know that you'd be more upset and more confused, and I'd want to help. And you didn't. And now you won't have to. I've had the results. Thanks for asking. And I'm all clear. You missed your chance. You want me to glass with Sally? What have you said to her? Oh. You all right? Genetically speaking. This bench. It's a bit warmer last time I proposed to you. Everything was different then. Oh, can't, can't we just forget about all this happened? I mean, go back to how it was. How? We all went a bit mad, but it's okay now. I know I was a bit of an idiot, but it was a shock. I love you. I've been thinking that I know you're never too keen on that Harley Davidson trip around the States. That so we do something else. You just fancy Paris, didn't you? What about a beach honeymoon? We're not having a beach honeymoon, Dean. Or any honeymoon. What do you mean? It's over between us. Why? You don't already know. You don't want me to tell you, believe me. I'm sorry, Dean. Goodbye. A doll? That's just the trouble, Dean. If you want a doll, get a doll. Darling, you're going to be okay. Where's Dean? It's over between us. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay, Dad. I know you never liked him. I always wanted a prince for you. He always struck me as a bit more of a tyrant. What's wrong? Do you think I would have been right to have the surgery? I would have wanted what you wanted. But do you think I would have been right? I think you would have been right, yeah. So why didn't you make more of it? When she had breast cancer the first time, why didn't you make her have the surgery? Darling girl. When your mum was ill the first time, before you were born, well, there were no gene tests in those days. She was offered the surgery as part of a treatment, and I, I wanted her to have it. I, I told her so too, but she decided not to. I mean, didn't know much about IVF then. She wanted children, a child, you. Hmm? She knew exactly what she was doing. And just like you, she's a very persuasive and determined woman. But it's because of me that the mum's... No! No, 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 no. Your happiness, her hope, she lives for you. We both do. You know, in all this, she only ever had one regret. You'd inherit it too, but now we can tell her about the test. You're going to be okay. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shall we go tell him now? <laughs> what did Mum think of Dean? She knew he loved you. And she hoped he'd make you happy, but she wanted to believe that you'd be happy when she got. And I will somehow. But Mum doesn't need to know it won't be with Dean.
Hello. Ronnie, hi. Hey. Listen, I've just finished a house call in your area and I was thinking about popping in to see you. Well, aren't we popular? First Mac and now you. Says you want to have any cute little baby girl. No, look, it'd be lovely to see you, but um, now's not a good time. Oh. No, it's, we've just got our hands full. Maybe tomorrow then? Or the day after? OK, great. Just, just give us a call and let us know. Of course. OK, bye. We have a double bill of doctors from five past two tomorrow afternoon. Tonight, sparks fly at Holby as Diane and Chrissy come to blows over Owen. That's at eight. And next this afternoon here on BBC One, Murder, She Wrote. <laughs>